Parvati Valley. The pleasant greens of the dense forests by the valley. A sky that chooses its own vivid colors that have the power to make one gaze all day. The calm, the beauty and the people. The Parvati Valley is known to instill peace and wilderness, good and evil, God and devil all at once. It's the roar that gives the valley its silence. It's the color that gives the valley its fertility. And it's this valley that makes Himachal Pradesh what it is today. And just like the Parvati River gushing forward, a slow agitation is around the bend for something which easily overpowers its beauty, its peace and what Himachal essentially is. That something is cannabis. A crop, the cultivation of which is illegal as per the laws of our nation. A crop which is primarily used for the extraction of charas. Democracy essentially means equality, freedom of life and liberty, and the right to choose. It is ironic that in the world's largest democracy, India, the right to choose is not given to all. It is given to a few, a select few, invariably the elite, who end up exploiting it. Now if you're wondering why I'm talking about the right to choose, freedom, democracy, etc., I have a point, and that lies in the lap of the Himalayas, in Himachal, in the north of India. Beneath the calm, beautiful surface of Himachal lies utter chaos. And the reason for this is the threat to that very right to choose. The Parvati Valley of Kulu was long since known as being the apple belt of the country and is now equally infamous for being home to the best cannabis in the world cannabis synonymous to charas and marijuana. Because cannabis cultivation is banned by law in India, the trade thrives illegally. The real challenge lies in answering three pertinent questions. Why is it grown? Why should it be grown? And why should it not be grown? The word weed, the common slang word for cannabis, weed, in this area and in other parts of the Western Himalaya, it is literally that, a weed. It grows wild, it's all over the hillsides, in places it hampers cultivation. If there was regular cultivation, it is dug up and thrown away and burned. Some use of this always existed down the centuries. There was use medicinally, it was used even smoking. It grows wild but now people have taken to its commercial cultivation keeping in mind the uh, charas which is extracted from the leaves the resin you get you make you get charas out of that so people are now uh, take, uh, taken to its commercial cultivation because there is a lot of money in the drug trade. Cannabis grows naturally at high altitudes all over the world. Ideally a full-grown cannabis plant is about four to five feet tall. It has numerous uses depending on the part of the plant that is harvested. It consists of three parts. The seed is used to extract oils, used in local cuisines and used as a medicine. The stem that is referred to as hemp is used to make strong ropes, shoes known as pulas and paper. The leaves and the flower produce resin which is used to extract mild psychotropic drugs such as marijuana and charas.
So the cannabis is as uh, old as the uh, you know Kullu district is uh, old, you know concerned. So uh, I think there is nothing new in uh, you know uh, about the cannabis. Everybody knows about it, and there are uh, three four different valleys in Kullu. Uh, these three, four valleys are very famous for the cannabis cultivation. See, the problem has been there for the past quite some time, but now it has assumed alarming proportions, primarily in two districts of Kulu and Mandi. But now, you know, people in other parts of the state have also taken to its cultivation, like the parts of Shimla district, Sirmaur district and Chamba districts. The Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act has constitutionally banned cannabis cultivation and consumption since the year 1985. It brings mild drugs like charas and marijuana under the same category of hard drugs such as cocaine, heroin and LSD. Despite this, the magnitude of cannabis in the Parvati Valley is increasing due to numerous reasons. एक ही प्रॉब्लम होती है इजी मनी जब इजी मनी किसी को मिलता है गवर्नमेंट का फॉरेस्ट लैंड है उसमें कैनविस पैदा हो रही है उसको स्मगल करके बेच देते हो ना तुम्हारा तुमने उसे खेतीबाड़ी में कुछ किया ना उसको सिर्फ उखाड़ा बेचा और पैसा कमा लिया तो इजी मनी की जो लालच है इसके कारण ही होता है Primarily, the plant was growing wild and they were just using it in some of the local cuisine or for their personal requirements, making ropes and stuff. But you know, once the, the outsiders got involved and made them realize the commercial value of it, the whole scenario has changed. I was in a country once and I was in a country where people come from there. And because it's very famous for Malana, it's so famous for Malana cream and it's so famous for Malana cream and it's so famous for Malana cream. वहाँ के फॉरेन मिनिस्टर जब मेरे से डिस्कस कर रहे तो कह रहे थे कि हमारे कंपलसरी आर्मी सर्विस होती है और तीन साल के बाद जब वो छूटते हैं तो ऐसे भागते हैं एकदम हिंदुस्तान जाते हैं हिमाचल जाते हैं तो मैंने कहा नहीं मलाना जाते हैं तो ही आल्सो लाव डेट ही आल्सो न्यू कि मलाना क्रीम वहाँ मशहूर है और लोग नशा करने के लिए आते हैं इस करके अप इन द रिमोट एरियाज ऑफ द पार्वती वैली रिसाइड एंशियंट विलेजेस सच एज तोश बर्शेनी एंड मलाना Malana is unique in every sense of the word. It is believed that Malana came into existence when Alexander the Great invaded India and some of his soldiers decided to stay back in the beautiful hills of Kullu. Today, the current inhabitants are believed to be the descendants of these soldiers and Alexander himself. It is this legend that makes them hold the belief that they are pure and therefore should not be touched by outsiders. I heard a lot, of, a lot of things about Malana, but I didn't know what to expect. So first impression it was a bit disappointing, you know, like cannot touch people, cannot touch houses, cannot touch temples, cannot go inside temples. But after a few days and after my second trip, I realized that it's like the only way that they got to maintain their culture, preserve their costumes. Malana has been a democracy ever since its inception. This quaint village had cut off from the rest of the world till the late 20th century. While Malana can be a case study in itself, what should be considered here is the fact that for the major part of its existence, the people of Malana have known to cultivate only one crop that did them any good, cannabis, which they refer to as bhang. हाँ देखो आपने यहाँ देखा होगा गांव में आपने शूज भी बनाते हैं आपना फिर उसको रस्सी बनाते हैं उसको लकड़ी या आपने जलाने के काम भी आता लकड़ी इसके लिए यूज़ हो जाता है तो यहाँ पर मंदिर में जब देवता का कार्रवाई हो उसमें ये चढ़ता है इसका बीच चढ़ता है यहाँ पर Malana outsiders are quite detested and disliked because Malana has shot into international fame for its, you know, cannabis uh, trade. For them, it is there is no illegality. A child will grow up seeing his parents cultivate it. For them, it's a question of bread and butter. For them, the law doesn't, you know, a child would be too, too young to even comprehend and understand what is illegal. And for them, you know, when it's a question of your livelihood, then illegality doesn't matter. उसके लिए उनको permission दी जाती थी थोड़ा सा कहने में सुगान है कि जो उनके domestic needs की जो चीजें हैं उसको बनाने के लिए इस्तेमाल हो सके। लेकिन अब इसका misuse हो रहा है और उन लोगों को भी ये जो foreigners और mafia की वजह से वो भी इसलिए अब इसको पैसा कमाने के लिए लगाते हैं।
Malana is a now brand name, I would say. In fact, somebody told me that in Holland, uh, if you go to the pub, uh, Malana cream is the first, you know, on the menu, it is first thing. Uh, basically, the market is outside. The, the, the percentage profit is, oh, I mean, awesome. Here, the local is 30,000 per kg. Delhi is going to be 1 lakh kg. Bombay is going to be 2 lakh kg. The moment uh, beyond India, it reaches beyond India, 1 crore per kg. It's not just a local issue anymore. Times and technology have progressed and has landed this 900 crore trade in the waiting hands of foreigners. These visitors have started establishing business routes in Himachal and are a major part of both the buyer's and the seller's market. If you go to Parvati Valley and, and you know someone, it's very easy to get like the real stuff and that's for sure very, very good quality. The first time I was here, I, I rubbed some uh, charas myself and uh, I thought uh, that was some of the best I ever smoked. You can't generalize, you can't say that every foreigner coming to Kullu Manali is into drugs. See, that would be very wrong to, you know, condemn everybody. But, you know, if you see the arrests made by the police in such cases, you would see a sizable number of foreigners and Israelis constitute a sizable chunk in that. Primarily Israel because it's a, it's, it's a war-torn country. So they come here, they, they are, it's mandatory for all youth to serve in the army, so for them it's a, like, you know, an unwinding. And then of course, drugs is a lure. The most dangerous thing about smoking charras is the police. And maybe I, I could think that many police officers would like use the situation in order to like score some money themselves. At least if, if they caught a tourist like me, I'm sure that they were going to like want some money from me and just keep the money for themselves. If you look at the record of the Narcotics Control Bureau, the seizures that they are being made clearly indicate that the cultivation is on the rise. And you know, if it was solely for the religious sentiments of the locals, then the drug would not reach abroad and everywhere. So one has to admit that there is a commercial angle to it and people are using it. So you know, under the garb of religious sentiments, you can't let such an illegal trade flourish and thrive. The cannabis issue is slowly spilling out of the Parvati Valley and finding a place in Shimla, the capital of Himachal Pradesh. It has become a point of debate and was a major highlight of the recent state elections. In this push and pull scenario, cannabis sure has grabbed the nation's attention. Uh, you know, I can't speak for somebody. I can't say whether it was just to get votes or not. That's, you know, uh, personal, but uh, if yes, uh, there are people in, in politics, people in power over here who want to look at it from an economic aspect, I think it would uh, I think it'd be a fantastic idea. That's the step in the right direction, in fact. cannabis <laughs> आज किसी अन्य राष्ट्र को किसी दूसरे राष्ट्र पर हमला करने की आवश्यकता नहीं होती उसकी नौजवान पीढ़ी को नशीड़ कर दो उसको नशे की आदत डाल दो ड्रग एडिक्ट कर दो तो सबसे बड़ा डेंजर तो आज हमारे देश को ड्रग एडिक्शन है उसे बचाने की बात है जो पार्टी ऐसा अपना चुनाव घोषणा पत्र दे रही हैं वो तो एक तरह से देश के हितों के खिलाफ काम कर रही हैं द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट चरस एंड कैनबिस used as synonyms are in fact different. Charas is just one part of the cannabis plant. The several other positive uses of this plant is the reason why the locals of Himachal chose to cultivate it all these years. But now the right to cultivation to cannabis is being denied them because society as a whole is being adversely affected by the resultant illegal Charas trade. However, there have been arguments that if alcohol and nicotine, which are believed to be far more harmful, can come under the purview of personal choice, then why not charas? Therefore, many feel that the holy weed, marijuana, should be legalized. However, these are uncharted and unknown territories. I wonder if we are equipped enough to venture into them. The debate is no longer about Himachal, it is about India. It is about the world.
What started as a local plea has now become a socio-political issue and has echoed back again as a matter of right and wrong. But perhaps we only need to find a middle path. Perhaps we need to find a solution that justifies both sides. Far more addictive than cannabis is perhaps nicotine. Far more misuse than cannabis is perhaps alcohol. There is also the issue of personal choice. Now, as an adult, do you have personal choice to do a thing? Which in a democratic thing, personal choice is, is, is a very huge issue. But this is where what a society in general would consider right and what a society would consider wrong, that comes into play in this thing. Uh, I don't see too many people who smoke marijuana having bar fights, you know, compared to alcohol. Whereas alcohol is an aggressive form of drug, in my opinion. Uh, you know, so there are a lot of, you know, you have to look at it in a practical manner and not in an emotional manner. The fact of the matter is that it's been termed or deemed as a drug, whereas alcohol is, you know, a status quo that you drink, so, you know, you're part of a certain genre of society. And I think that needs to be changed in people's minds. Lately, the demand to legalize cannabis is on the rise. The country that had pressurized us into illegalizing cultivation in 1985, that is the USA, today has itself legalized cannabis in two of its states. In the light of this interesting turn of events, Himachalis want to follow suit. However, Everyone has different reasons. For some, it's for recreational use of churras, which they argue is less harmful than alcohol or tobacco, both of which are legal in India. But for some, it's their only means of livelihood. It's the base of their ecosystem which works on the hemp and herbal qualities of cannabis. <laughs> As say medicine, it is used in cold and cup. Also in cancer, say you can say tumors and cancerous ulcers. So it not only say useful as medicine, food, fiber, right? But also it is found in the wasteland where vegetation cover is very less. It uh, checks soil erosion. So by this way, I think uh, it has uh, say narcotic uh, values also if uh, this has been highlighted uh, say in a negative term. In terms of black gold, selling black gold in the markets, but if we compare both, pluses and minuses, then I would say this species is very, very useful for the livelihood of the local people here in the Himalayan region. But it's, it should not be highlighted uh, as its negative values, but it should be highlighted as its positive values so that it becomes the, say, earning source and livelihood option of the local people. Maybe it's just a plant which is growing, but the ultimate derivative and people are getting hooked to it. So, you know, there are so many other better options. I mean, in the local area, you can have better things. Agreed, it will not bring in that much of money, but it is too big a price to pay for the lives of youth. So you can't have the villagers um, having a lot of money at the cost of so many lives. We do economic benefit in that country, which is bad for the country, and bad it sounds unbelievable, but in the state capital, Shimla, surveys have indicated that about 60% of the college and school youth are addicted to drugs. So, you know, you, you, you are thinking of providing a livelihood and good income to the villagers, but then the far-reaching consequences are too serious. Let me look at it like this. I have two sons. Um, my older one's a late teenager and I've got a younger one. So when I look at life through their eyes and I look at to what all is open for them and I can see what can go right and what can go wrong, that is when I think 
yes maybe it's a message i do want to give and it's a very simple thing eh? whatever is going to create trouble for you lay off it there it is that's your peer group peer pressure whether you're in college whether you know hostels whether the people you're hanging around with so that's what they sometimes say the abc of life avoid bad company the concern thus remains as to how the youth gets such easy access to the derivative drug charas despite a comprehensive system someone somehow always manages to slip through there are a lot of agencies involved in the whole um, to check the whole problem there is a narcotics control bureau the state cid is there the government has even constituted a high impact committee chaired by the chief secretary with officials of the forest department pwd revenue so that an integrated approach can be adopted but uh, you know lack of manpower with the police personnel lack of sophisticated equipment so all these problems add to the uh, issue you know earlier what they used to do they will have this one you know one danda one just stick and they will just you uh, use that stick to uh, destroy that this year we have uh, we have that you know sort kind of thing so we have around 200 uh, those and uh, patrol operating uh, chain so we used this first time and we were quite successful in that unfortunately the police are not always successful one of the main reasons being the lack of funds i think the uh, the major constraint uh, resources uh, concern is this you are not getting any money and we need a motivation also what we are giving to policeman if he catch something like he catch 1 kg of charas if you are in ncb you get the prize money but if you are in himachal police you will not get anything again this is the problem as a sp i can give him maximum 500 rupees 500 rupees is the maximum i can give and i have 3000 of uh, budget so if i have 3000 of budget and i am giving 500 to a person so i can give maximum to six persons and i i just mentioned uh, we have registered 138 cases of ndps you can imagine what can be done from my side it is not just the police who need motivation the locals also need to be motivated to adopt alternatives alternatives which should be at least as rewarding as cannabis if not more government will have to give them opportunities which bring in enough money for them you know not just eke out a living but for a you know comfortable living so it is not just in terms of cash crops like you know peas and potatoes give them employment a lot of power projects are coming up in the area right in the vicinity there is a power project by the name of malana hydro power project so you know they will have to be uh, absorbed in those places where they get money not just from one source because it will not be that substantial so something has to be you know brought in to wean away the locals from this and first of all you know the mindset has to be changed so so a lot of efforts will have to be taken and it's not just the police alone who can tackle the problem so it has to be an integrated approach with it everybody pitching in However, providing a successful workable solution is not the responsibility of just one civic body. The society as a whole has to be included and that cannot happen overnight. So, if you want to change that system, you need you know concentrated effort in that area with the legal framework. I mean, you should have uh, enforcement of law as well as other means of livelihood then only it will be able to uh, success in that area there are different theories of uh, sociologists they say integration is the best approach you give something you take something and integrate them just don't you know delete the system it can never happen it, the, the, the issues in world are too complicated to try and simplify you can't simplify them and it would be wrong on my part to try and simplify some issues which are so complicated because the layers and layers and the gray areas in this are enormous so it's not really possible to just sort of give it in one line good bad ugly don't do this do this the gray area this has this needs is number one complete analyzed legislation and critically 
enforcement of the legislation. Legislation comes, but who's going to enforce that legislation? That is the issue. In an effort to resolve these three pertinent questions about cannabis, a fourth question arises. The question of where do we stand? Consider this. The Netherlands earns 400 million euros on an average every year from tax revenues on cannabis, which is legal there. On the other hand, in Singapore, even possession can lead to the death penalty. Two countries with two extreme systems, both right, both wrong, both different from India. India has a choice between these two systems. But cannabis will always remain an issue unless whichever system we choose, we manage to implement effectively. And why just cannabis? This holds true of any other issue that plagues our country today. We are a nation of one billion people. Just imagine, if each one of us identifies our strengths and works collectively towards a solution, there will come a time when every issue will cease to be an issue. A question that calls from deep within. Its answer, you will find solace in. An echo will rise against this fall. There will be an answer to your empty call.